Woo, Lordy. I sure do love me some white folks. Mm-hmm. Sure enough, I do. Lord of mercy, I clear. I wish I was a white folks with these hairs golden as the noonday sun and these skin as white as a fresh can of Crisco. Well, I clear if I gots to be a <laughs> then I's be the white man's <laughs> Mm-hmm. Women allow themselves to be masculinized. It's like betatization through a thousand concessions. The wife constantly asks the husband to give and give and give and give and give. And then she basically ends up in this dominant position that she never wanted to be in. And masculine wives, I'm telling you, sometimes they are the death of the, the man, the marriage, the household, just absolutely miserable. Because I got to tell you the truth, folks. I got to tell you the truth. When it comes to bullshit, big time, major league bullshit, you have to stand in awe. In awe of the all-time champion of false promises and exaggerated claims, religion. No contest. He's out of line, but he's right. It's a it's a tough one, and there's just some some dark dark comedy and me missing a penalty in my last game ever. So survive to get to the round of 16. What? The I, I appreciate them taking care of the fans, but let me tell you, Carly Lloyd's butt would be back in the locker room kicking things, I have, throwing things. I have never witnessed, and just seeing these images for the first time right now on the desk, I have never witnessed something like that. There's a difference between being respectful of the fans and saying hello to your family, but to be dancing, to be smiling. I mean, the player of the match was that post. You were lucky to not be going home right now. We're gonna let a lady explain why this celebration. No. Uh -uh. I cut that propaganda by Manosphere Daily Highlights because I can't stand to hear a house Negro justify their white bias. You welcome brothers and sisters. So we have two very special little yellow bus riding with football helmet wearing YouTubers who hate political activism in America. Now let's be very clear. Neither one of these alleged men are black or have a stake in anything involving civil rights. Between Beetlejuice and a glorified gas station clerk, they both have managed to try and dunk on the black experience here in America. Don't believe me? Go ahead and look through their catalog of content. There is strong hate for anything that supports, uplifts brown skin in all facets. I will save you time and my voice by letting an all-pro shut the door on these two and their effeminate need to suck up the establishment. Kind of like a house negro. Exactly like a house negro. Alexi Lelas claims the U.S. women's soccer team has become unlikable after players failed to sing the national anthem at the World Cup and says the players risk becoming irrelevant over their political stances. You see, that's the real issue here, mixing politics with sports. It's not that people dislike the sport itself, it's more about some players publicly sharing their political views on the soccer field that gets... You don't know what you're talking about, do you? So now that we have addressed Manosphere Daily Highlights and his crusade to love men and hate women, we also exposed his slave mind to use the American flag like white nationalists do. Refuse to hear minority concerns. They should just be happy to be in America. This cowardly house negro of non-black origin still manages to keep the masses house clean by hating minority concerns, but wants men to listen to his hidden face, sissy boy commentary of relationships. No, sir. We can smell a pussy a mile off in you, madam. You reek. The good news for this penis-sniffing content creator? He isn't alone. We have white and fake black daily sports agrees with him. Women tend to agree with other. That irony doesn't escape me. 
When black people like me talk to the slaves, they didn't kill him. They sent some old house negro along behind him to undo what he said. You have to read the history of slavery to understand this. There were two kinds of negroes. There was that old house negro and the field negro. And the house negro always looked out for his master. When the field negroes got too much out of line, he held them back in check. He put them back on the plantation. The house negro could afford to do that because he lived better than the field negro. He ate better, he dressed better, and he lived in a better house. He lived right up next to his master in the attic or the basement. He ate the same food his master ate and wore his same clothes. And he could talk just like his master. master. Good diction. And he loved his master more than his master loved himself. That's why he didn't want his master hurt. If the master got sick, he'd say, what's the matter, boss? We sick. When the master's house caught a fire, he'd try and put the fire out. He didn't want his master's house burned. He never wanted his master's property threatened. And he was more defensive of it than the master was. That was the house Negro. But then you had some field Negroes who lived in huts, had nothing to lose. They wore the worst kind of clothes, they ate the worst food, and they caught hell. They felt the sting of the lash. They hated their master. Oh, yes, they did. If the master got sick, they prayed that the master died. <laughs> if the master's house caught a fire, they prayed for a strong wind to come along. This was the difference between the two. And today you still have house Negroes and field Negroes. The main event starts now. All right, guys, we need to talk about Megan Rapinoe yet again. Didn't John seem a little festive to you? Couldn't agree more. Happy as a clam. He prefers the company of men. Who doesn't? Homer, listen carefully. John is a ho-mo. I've said it many, many times, guys, that Megan Rapinoe is the most unlikable athlete out there in the world. Now, you guys, we do not care. Guys, know that we come hard at LeBron James here on this channel. Prefers the company of men. LeBron James is way, way, way more likable. My God, man. Does he just spray arm all on his face or some shit? Just greasy, motherfucker. My God. Just glistening like, like Patrick Ewan in the fourth quarter. Just, just greasy, shiny motherfucker, my God. I gotta wipe the grease off the screen. I can't say shit. Jam then Megan Rapino. I actually believe that Megan Rapino is scum. She tr Whatever you say, Beetlejuice, she is blacker than you are. I absolutely know you are scum, whose parents failed to raise you in a manner other than a bootlicker and a greasy parrot. Race traitors are a unique kind of aberration, worse than a snitch in prison. He has no real connection to anything of the struggle of minorities, especially when they can get on a national and international stage. Coons, like this knockoff Jermaine Jackson, doesn't respect civil rights protests, political statements, and standing for something more than enjoying the masses' YouTube channel. What a waste of black skin. Truly is. I mean, yeah, LeBron James actually knelt in that bubble, in yes! 2020, yes! but he hasn't nailed for the national yes! anthem since. Yes! Megan Rapino has been yes! on a crusade yes! to be an anti-American. Yes! yes, LeBron James yes! is anti-American too. Yes! But Megan Rapino yes! wants you to yes! know all the time yes! that she truly, truly hates it. Ignored the young fan asking for an autograph. Yeah, she sh she actually did sign his ball, but she didn't even make eye contact with him. So here we go. Look at this here on the Daily Mail. Megan Rapino sparks fear. Read with Hooked on Phonics, the musical reading program. Hooked on Phonics works for me. Call 1 800 A B C D E F G. Fury for ignoring young fan as she signs his football in resurface footage and even tennis bad boy Nick Kyrgios agree. She's diabolically arrogant. Roll. Let's go ahead and look at this clip, guys. I mean, I'm assuming that's uh, probably Sue Bird. 
No, that's not Sue Bird Nestor. I don't think that is. But Megan Rapino is right here. Okay. This young fan gives her the soccer ball and she never makes eye contact with him. It's only seven seconds. Let's go and watch this. Uh Ten, nine. Wow. Wow. It's one of the most iconic moments in sports history, the raised fist protest at the 1968 Olympics. Special correspondent James Brown says 51 years later, the Americans who staged that protest are entering the U.S. Olympic Hall of Fame. Tommy Smith's fist was the highest. He had just won the 200-meter gold medal. Right next to him was bronze medalist and teammate John Carlos. People could not understand. It was not about the flag. It was a chance to heighten the idea that we must eradicate stupidity called racism. It was a statement through symbolism. The gloved fists represented power. The head bowed represent prayer or faith. The feet with the pants rolled represented poverty. One of the most important things was making a statement without saying a word. The reaction was swift. Smith and Carlos were suspended from the national team and immediately sent home. They were vilified, at one point homeless and unemployed. Although I had 11 world records, I was washing cars just to feed my son. I couldn't find a job because they viewed me as a radical person who was dangerous. Smith and Carlos eventually recovered. Both coached and taught in college and high school. Today, at 75 years of age, Smith says his induction into the Olympic Committee Hall of Fame is bittersweet. Is this in some way an admission on the organization's part? We were on the wrong side of history. I think they, they begin to see that now. Yes, it was the right thing to do. While induction is an honor any athlete would treasure. He shared with me a letter that he plans to read at Friday's ceremony. My crime, taking advantage of a moment, and a platform to call attention to injustice. A dream long deferred for two courageous young men. James Brown, CBS News, Atlanta. Tommy Smith once said we had to be seen because we couldn't be heard. It didn't take me long to put this video together. Um, and when I'm motivated, like especially insulted, by um, people who have a reach that can influence others, like these two jackasses. You got one, well, they're both false teachers, but one more so than the other. That's, you know, uh, Manosphere Daily Highlights. That's why is it a false teacher? Anyone that denigrates, and this is biblical, by the way, any man, woman, doesn't matter if they're disparaging. And telling folks to refrain from marriage, that is a dead indicator that they're that not only they're a false teacher, they're against everything good. It, it's just that simple. They you can argue all you want to, you can make all the highlight videos you want. They all go be crap, they're all gonna be trash because it doesn't override the Bible. It just don't. Your man loving ideas. If you, look, you do what you want to do. You want to be with your boys and 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 exclude women as much as you want. You go right ahead. But watch your damn mouth when you're trying to spit on one of the greatest unions that God has ever created. Is it perfect? No. Are there problems? Yes. Overall, does that override the the beauty and power and grace and elegance of marriage? No. It just means people like you shouldn't be married. Any man foolish, foolish enough to marry you is a fool. 
that's you, Manosphere, whatever. Now for our coon-loving house negro, Stephen. Both of these cats are spitting on that famous black fist that has that is iconic to this day. Both of these two Negroes are slapping in the face all that these two men and a whole nation of people that stood and applauded with them, you know, black folks, people of brown skin, you know, these two motherfuckers should be skinned for the because the skin that they're wearing, they don't deserve that skin. If they can have their opinion, sure, after you drown them, they can have whatever opinion you want. But when you start attacking a civil rights movement, when you start trying to say, well, they should just be happy being American, put the flag, that's white nationalism, punks. That's what these two do represent. It ain't about Megan Rapino. Who cares about that heifer? But when you try to blanket statement, you shouldn't be getting on a political stage. Uh, I mean, a, 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 a stage at an international level to try to hold your political events. Where else are you going to do it? Ain't nobody else listening. Protests on national levels and international levels have been a thing that America's known for. And as much as these two bastards hate it, I'm damn proud of it. I'm not a Megan Rapino fan. I ain't a women's soccer fan. But I like them now because they're pissing these two effeminate men off. And you know what? If they can ruffle their feathers, that should tell you something. Because outside of that, what real what what real benefit do they offer society? What do they bring to the table? And, and it comes to civil rights. When it comes to protesting injustice and racism, what do they bring to the table? Nothing. They're just gonna talk about how women suck. And, and men, if you're a high value man, you do all it's all, it's all, it's all penis sniffing stuff. It is creepy, to be quite honest. Not that men's rights aren't valid. Oh, hell yes. Men's activism. Hell yes. But that ain't what Manosphere over here is doing. He may have tricked you. But see, the good news about how a jackass and, and, a, and a moron thinks is that Eventually, their real selves will come out. Let me tell you something. It wouldn't be shocking to, to realize if any one of them during any of the George Floyd stuff, and to hell with Black Lives Matters, that, that organization, to hell with them too, because they nothing but a bunch of scandalous witches. But it's just, I don't even want to go down that road, because that's even worse. But... It's important to understand when you got these two sycophant brothers and they're not brothers of mine because I promise you, it, I would go old Islam if these were my brothers. I would highly, highly implore our parents return these two back to the earth. Y'all make me two, no, two more brothers. These dudes are capped. They're done. There ain't nothing else to them. Nothing else. Their entirety of their careers on YouTube is bitching and criticizing rather than adding something meaningful to the world we live in. Like I just call it, I'm just call it like it is. Now, they any one of them dudes courageous enough to come talk to me, you please, please do. It'll be the most embarrassing bad mistake you will make. But I challenge anytime you're ready, dog. Because when you start spitting on people, when you spit on this black fist, it's, it's going to knock your fronts down. Nothing makes me sick than to see fake ass brothers attacking good First Amendment practices. So they can sniff up to the white nationalists. They want that American flag to, to silence people. I, I've been going hard at LeBron James. I'm sure you have with that lanolin, brother. I'm sure you have with that silicone gel. I am sure there's no doubt in my mind you going hard after LeBron. Because otherwise you ain't got nothing to, got nothing to say about him at all. Nothing. 
You got nothing to add to his, to his life. You got you can't take away nothing from his life. All you can do is hate like a bitch and, and make your fake fraudulent ass audience who thinks you somebody, look, he's getting out to LeBron. Who cares? LeBron don't. As long as he can keep getting your money, guys, that's out there listening to love this fake dude. That's what he's really after. If you can't really, you can't really, when you said you, you, you know, you should see him skiing because he's wearing that. Yes, he should be skin. Take that black skin off, bro. It, it is a, it is a failed, it is a failed experiment. Your parents failed us. Man on Sphere Daily Highlights, your parents failed us. They need to start over, get someone else fresh, go upside that brother's head so they don't turn out like y'all. Now, I know y'all should probably be saying, man, Eric, you should just calm down. It's not that big. It's just an opinion. When you attack this black fist, you're moving past opinion. you now saying civil rights don't, it needs to have a place in its own. You know, like what, what white nationals saying about the NFL players, they're taking a knee. Well, you don't do that in the NFL. You do it where? In the neighborhood where no one's watching, where the media's not at? Are y'all that damn stupid? I shouldn't have. That's more rhetorical at this point. But I'll close out with this. If you want to know how God makes a food, you know, you know these two. If you want to know what it looks like, look at <laughs> their idea or their ideals of things is they're saying the same thing the white nationalist is saying. Know your place, brown-skinned people. This ain't the time or place for sports. I mean, uh, for politics. This is sports. They just brought politics to sports just as they're trying to advocate not to do it. It's just commentary. You can't make this stuff up. Guys, it's just a short video because I wanted to just get this together and... I just get it out there because I, I'm, I'm, uh, if it was any, I don't give a damn about Megan Rapino. None of them, none of that matters to me. But what matters is when you spit on the entirety and you want to lump civil rights into whatever Megan Rapino and all that concoction she's putting together because you're too stupid and your parents were too stupid to educate you correctly on what actually happened. I had to leave a video in here so y'all can see what they're spitting on. These two guys. I hope that, that you replay that and see exactly so you know why LeBron did what he did, why Cap did what he did, why in the NFL they did what they did. And all them white owners, them white nationalist owners, and all them other ones, I can't believe they did that on this stage. I don't, I smiled. I ain't stopped smiling. The flag does not mean silence. That flag has no governance over my life. It doesn't dictate anything in my life. It doesn't make me want to be quiet. It will never make me be silent. And it doesn't cover up injustice as much as these two Negroes, house Negroes, by the way, want you to believe. Love my country? Sure. Am I proud of my country? Hell no. Have you seen the evil and blood that they still trying to cover up? But you know what? I can live with this in this country because we, we make strides forward. But it only comes when brothers like Tommy Smith put that black fist up. On a, when, when the stage is at his highest. My advice to, to, to the manosphere what daily who likes to keep the company of men, my advice to you, just keep hating on women. That's your bread and butter. You keep doing that. We all know it's not a woman on this earth that'll ever take you serious unless you got a good wallet and then you can pay for it. As for Goober who goes hard at LeBron and doing all these other things, as long as you keep your Vaseline and lotion uh, <laughs> subscription on Amazon correct, you can go as hard as you want with LeBron, but you'll never make a damn difference. And I'm here 24-7, anytime, any day, to course correct you live. That's what I do to bitches. 
straighten them out. For the victory lap though. Whoa, whoa. They ain't never seen nothing like this before.